Welcome to this recitation on a phase portrait. So you're given matrix A, a two by two matrix with entries minus one, minus one, one minus C, where C is a constant where we'll be varying, and minus one. As C increases from zero to other positive values, determine the path of the system on the trace determinant diagram that we saw in previous recitations, and draw the phase portraits that corresponds to uh, the critical points uh, and the nature of the critical points. So here, we're basically talking of a system that would be a two by two system where we have derivative of entries x, y for a vector equals to this matrix A, C, multiplying the unknown uh, vector x, C. So take a few minutes and work out through this problem, and I'll be right back. Welcome back. OK, so I already prepared the trace diagram, uh, the, the trace determined diagram for you. So here, as a reminder, this is the uh, parabola that determines whether we're going to have uh, repeated eigenvalues or not. Above this parabola, we have two, real, uh, two uh, complex conjugate eigenvalues. Below this parabola, we have real eigenvalues, either of the same signs, positive or negative, or of different signs. And then we have the borderline cases. In our case here, we're looking at a matrix A with the trace equals to minus one plus m minus one minus one, so it's minus two, and a determinant that is equal to two minus C. So here we are basically along this dotted line where the trace equals to minus two. So either we're going to have complex values with negative real parts or uh, negative eigenvalues. So we are in stable configurations. So we're going to be moving at c equal to 0 from a case where I'm just going to label this point 1. From, for example, we have the matrix minus 1, 1, 1, minus 1, with the trace equals to minus 2, and the determinant equals to 2. So clearly, we are at this point. And we, were, we are just going to be increasing the value of c and moving along this line, crossing this first boundary case where we will have uh, either defective or, or not case. And I'll discuss very briefly uh, what we have. And then we have other value where we are basically in this area where we have uh, real eigenvalues, both of them negative. So we have uh, stability, and it would basically be a sink. And then we cross this uh, other borderline case where the determinant is equal to 0. And here we have one uh, eigenvalue that is equal to 0 and one that is negative. And then we get to the, the part of the diagram where the determinant is negative and the trace is negative. And we basically have a saddle, uh, a saddle uh, structure where we have uh, one eigenvalue that is negative and another eigenvalue that is positive. So let's get through these uh, five cases. And I'll just do more detailed picture illustrating what I just said. So I'll just uh, write down a bit more in detail the first case here. So we have the case where the, tr the, the, uh, the eigenvalues are both complex conjugate, and we have their real part being negative. So basically, we have spirals, right? asymptotically stable spirals. And uh, the spirals could be either clockwise or counterclockwise. And one way of determining the direction of these spirals is to look at the sign of the velocity vector of the trajectories in the phase space. So the phase space basically diagram here where we have x and y as the axis of, the, of this space. So let's look at Let's look, for example, at a, a particular point here that would be velocity vector 1, 0. And this uh, position vector 1, 0 would give us a velocity vector uh, of minus 1 and plus 1. So basically, this vector would be directed upward, which means that we are in the case where we would have a spiral coming this way toward the critical point and basically with the velocity vector here going this way. You don't have to actually do all this to figure out 
which direction of the spiral you should choose. You can just look for these cases, two by two matrices, at the entry at the lower left part of your matrix. And if the coefficient here is positive, then it will determine the direction of the, uh, of the velocity vector at this point. So if it's positive in this case, you would have this counterclockwise uh, direction of rotation of the spiral. Okay, so now we can move on and do the, second, the following cases a bit faster. So the second case, we are in the case where we now have two repeated eigenvalues. Both of them are negative. So we can have either uh, a complete case. If we had a matrix that was diagonal, we would have basically a star. But that's not the case because if we pick, for example, the value C equals to 1 that puts us on the parabola, we can see that the matrix AC is not diagonal. So we are in a defective case. The defective case, uh, if you compute the eigen, uh, values and eigenvector, would give you something that looks like that. The first ray of the eigenvector corresponding to uh, your uh, eigenvalues would be uh, in the direction of 1, 0. We have negative eigenvalues, so it's going to 0. And basically, in, to determine the direction, you have to see that we're also following a transition here on the determinant, uh, on, the, on the trace determinant diagram. And so basically, we will have um, a spiral that would look like this. Um, oops. What am I doing? Am I doing the same thing? Yeah. Oh. And it would basically rotate, as you can see here, in the same direction as the case that we had just before, because we basically have the transition of the structure of the critical point, okay? And the arrows are pointing toward the critical point again because our two eigenvalues are, uh, uh, are basically here negative, which is just a repeated eigenvalue that is negative. Okay, so now we can move on to a third case where here we move into the wedge area where we have the two eigenvalues now being real and uh, both of them are negative. So for example, we would have two eigenvalues that would give us two eigenvectors that are basically the rays. The direction of the trajectories on these two rays would be toward the critical point because we have, again, negative uh, eigenvalues. And uh, the trajectories then would be following the uh, lambda. So if I, for example, pick lambda 1 less than lambda 2, have something like this going to zero. And we would have this trajectory corresponding to the eigenvalue that is the closer to zero. Okay? And again, the arrows would be going toward this critical point. So we can now move on. And if we keep increasing C, uh, we reach now the point four, where we are in the special case again, a boundary case where the determinant is zero. But the trace is non-zero. If the determinant is zero, which is the product of the two eigenvalues, it means that we have one eigenvalue that is equal to zero, and another eigenvalue that is actually, in this case, minus two, so just negative. So what happens here? Uh, what happens is that we have now the eigenvector that corresponds to the eigenvalue equals to zero is basically just defining a whole line of critical points. So all the points on this line that would correspond, so for example, to lambda zero, are all critical points. So we don't need to actually draw arrows here. All the points would be critical points. And another direction, or ray, would be determined by the second eigenvalue, va lambda two. And uh, we would have, for example, directions uh, in this way, that would correspond to the direction of V2. So all these would be parallel to V2. And we would have the trajectories going toward all the critical points on this line. So in this case, we're in a case where we actually don't have one localized critical points like in the previous case that we saw. We actually have a, full, a whole line of critical points. OK, so let's move one more point down. So here for another value of C, we now are in the lower part of the diagram where we now have two eigenvalues that are, again, real. But now the determinant is negative. Determinant is the product of the two. So basically, you know that one is positive and the other one is negative. 
Okay, so for example here, we would have uh, one positive, the negative eigenvalue. Uh, Oops, sorry, thank you. So we would have the positive eigenvalue and the negative eigenvalue here. So here again, we're just moving in the structure of the, of the uh, critical point. So we should have a smooth transition between the diagrams going 1 to 5. And so here what we see is that we actually have uh, the array that is basically the stable, the spa stable space here that would uh, give us the uh, trajectories going to 0, but it's the only air, uh, region where we have stability. And all the trajectories would just then be tangent in minus infinity to the, the array V1 corresponding to uh, the negative eigenvalue and going toward the direction of the ray with the positive eigenvalue uh, at plus infinity. Okay, So we would have something like that that would correspond to a saddle. This would be a comp. This is basically a sink or basically a stable node. This would be defective stable node. And here we just have a asymptotically stable spiral. So uh, basically here what you could see is that we have, uh, by just changing the value of the constant c, had uh, moved this, the, the structure of the critical point for the, of the system from the phase diagrams 1 to 5, and the transitions can be seen to be smooth if you had a continuum of values of 4C. So that ends this recitation.